An active summertime pattern continuing with the potential for more heavy rain and severe storms that could lead to flooding, including potential tropical trouble by next week. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this, I believe it is Thursday, right? Yeah, July 10th and double digits of July already. And uh, things continuing to stay active. Unfortunately, we've had a lot of flash flooding problems so far this month. I think we'll see a little bit more of that uh, at least over the next day or so. And then I'm watching the potential of uh, later this weekend and into early next week for a semi-tropical system that could once again increase rainfall chances for some of us. I'll tell you where that is and how much rain you could potentially see in today's video. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead, like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications so you're up to date with the uh, latest and ever-changing weather that we're always tracking here. And trust me, there is uh, plenty of surprises probably on the way to the forecast. There always is, especially this time of year during the summer uh, is uh, often whenever we get the biggest surprises uh, just due to these little mesoscale setups that often happen. All right, let's dive on into things. And we're going to zoom things out a little bit, take a look at uh, some tropics and the continental United States uh, with our water vapor loop. And uh, again, if you don't know this map, basically the uh, more white and greenish colors, the more moist it is out there, at least in the upper levels, and the more uh, dark blue and kind of um, orange and yellow colors, the drier it is. And you can see we've got this big plume of moisture throughout much of the eastern United States, really connected to the tropics. We've got a lot of tropical influence here. But you'll notice a sharp divide there between that and uh, less moisture out here through portions of the Ohio and Tennessee Valley and even back down into Texas. And uh, that's definitely a good thing because we could use the dry air down in Texas after what has really just been a tragic um a week or so uh, with the flooding news out of the Lone Star State. So we'll definitely take the dry air there. And the dry air is slowly pushing east, but the key word there is slowly. While it's doing so, we're still getting a lot of afternoon thunderstorms to bubble up. We saw plenty of flooding yesterday in Virginia and the Carolinas uh, because of this and uh, likely to see a little bit more of it today as well. On the flip side of that, uh, we also have another storm system, this one up in the Midwest. This storm, uh, more of a severe weather producer and heavy rain event as well, but I think severe weather is a bigger concern with that system compared to um, in the east where we're just really getting some stronger afternoon storms associated with uh, mainly straight line winds being the concern there. But uh, definitely a relatively active pattern. Now for the tropics themselves, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, not a whole lot going on. There's nothing specific to watch from the National Hurricane Center. But uh, again, I just want to keep an eye on this area off the southeast coastline. It's very moist out there. And this boundary, as it's beginning to work on through, is going to kind of stall out over the Atlantic and as we know, that is a recipe sometimes for homegrown tropical development. We'll talk about that potential coming up later in the video. But first, let's take a look at our watches, warnings, advisories, and current radar imagery out there. And uh, all things considered, pretty typical summertime look right now. Afternoon storms beginning to develop all throughout the east. We've got heavy rain from Louisiana up through the Carolinas, Virginia, even up into the northeast. Still rocking flood watches here in the green from uh, the Sand Hills of North Carolina, northbound up into Virginia. This includes portions of the Delmarva as well out here towards uh, portions of uh, Southern Maryland. So you can see flooding is still a concern and uh, some of these storms also trying to become severe at the time I'm recording this kind of severe warning out here near Oconee County, uh, South Carolina. It's at about 2.15 Eastern time. So you know, by the time you're watching this, I'm sure that'll be gone, but you get the point. Uh, and you can see some of these stronger storms up into the Northeast and then our, our storm system back out in the Midwest. Uh, also continuing to cause some problems. So that's kind of a current look at things. Let's take a look at the upper levels. Let's dive into the severe weather threat first and then talk about that flooding potential and potential tropical-ish, we'll call it, uh, tropical-ish, I don't know why I said that so weirdly, tropical-ish connections uh, that uh, could lead to that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. Well, the upper level map is showing uh, the pattern quite well, I'd say, and you can see kind of what's happening. Here's that boundary we've been talking about, very slow moving. This is that forcing mechanism for all these storms we've seen uh, over the southeast over the past couple of days, continuing to slowly work on through, and that's why we have the flooding threat again today through portions of the Carolinas and Virginia, kind of where that system is stalled out. To the north, another upper level system into eastern Canada. This could lead to severe weather today into portions of the northeast. We'll watch for that, and then back out west. We've got a big storm system right here into Canada as well. And then uh, also another storm system here over Wisconsin. So most of the energy out there, you can tell, is kind of boxed into the northern United States here. And that's pretty typical for this time of year. And that's why uh, the real severe weather, including all hazards from tornadoes to wind to hail, has been kind of locked up north. Uh, that's where we have the most spin and energy out there. But again, what happens is these uh, storms, they drop fronts, those fronts work through, and then they kind of lose 
lose, uh, you know, steam due to the summertime. We don't have uh, the upper level jet really helping to push these things. And they call it, uh, they just stall out here over the eastern U.S., especially the southeastern and mid-Atlantic. And that's why flooding has been a concern. And these can sometimes lead to tropical spin-ups. Uh, so that's kind of what we're seeing out there right now. Just a lot of different storm systems working through. And as we go through the next day or two, the northern stream stays active and uh, you can see that here all the way through the weekend. It's the northern side of the country that is getting the storms. But like I said, uh, they kind of uh, lose steam and then drop these boundaries to the south that once again are forcing mechanisms for storms. So uh, that's the pattern. It's a pretty common one this time of year. It's nothing that is um, being uh, you know manipulated or anything like that. I know the conspiracy theories have been running wild so far. Uh, really, I'd say since Helene. I don't know what it was. Ever since Helene, the you know weather modification people who believe in that sort of thing, uh, have been running, you know, full steam ahead with it. And, uh, it's just, you know, I don't know, it's modern day age, it's social media. Anybody can say anything and, uh, people will believe it, especially with the way AI has gone. Um, you know, I think, uh, that's a whole topic on its own. I won't get into, but this is pretty typical for summer is the kind of key thing uh, to take away from that. Uh, severe weather today. And again, I'm recording this at two in the afternoon, so we'll see how, uh, important this is for many of you by the time you're watching it. But you know, we talked about it yesterday anyway. So, uh, we do have an enhanced risk. That's level three out of five out here into the Midwest, Sioux city, Omaha tornado threat today is kind of, uh, elevated out here into portions of the Midwest. Like I said, that's where we have the big storms. That's where we have the spin. And that's where, again, things are kind of a little bit more active tornado-wise. But wind is a bigger threat for everybody. Again, strong wind out here. We've got strong wind into the northeast, uh, into portions of upstate New York and Vermont. Could see strong straight line winds. The Carolinas, Georgia uh, could see downburst potential today. Tomorrow, we'll do it all again. A ribbon of more of an all-hazard severe weather risk from southern Michigan, Detroit, Lansing, over to South Bend, uh, Chicagoland, up into Rockford, Davenport, Burlington, and even into Kansas City and Topeka in this slight risk for tomorrow. The tornado threat tomorrow, yeah, still present out here with this storm system in the Midwest. Uh, I've said it already, I'll say it again, more spin out here means higher in tornado potential, where in the east, as we go to the wind side, you'll notice that's the main threat we're watching here through the Appalachian chain, a strong straight line winds. Uh, with any of these storms, and then obviously uh, the continuing flooding threat as well. Final day, that would be day three, if uh, my math is correct. That would be, let's see, uh, Saturday. <laughs> uh, you can see two areas we're watching for some strong storm potential, uh, especially up here in the Midwest. I'd say we've got more upper level dynamics, so we'll watch that and see how it trends. Uh, I'll just pull it up on the fly here. Excessive rainfall is another thing we need to watch for today. Uh, again, could see flooding potential from Iowa to Nebraska over to southern Wisconsin with that northern storm system and then into the east with these uh, very slow moving storms associated with this boundary. Charlotte, Columbia, Florence, Fayetteville, uh, up into the triad, the triangle and into Virginia and then also another elevated place up here towards Montpelier and Burlington. So uh, that's kind of the uh, other big threat we're watching tomorrow. We could watch for flooding again in the Midwest. Uh, the storm system also not moving very quickly, so we'll watch for severe weather and flooding there. Still uh, flooding potential into the Mid-Atlantic and Southeast with these summertime storms that are slowly moving. And then for your Saturday, the flooding threat, unfortunately, again, trying to shift back down south into Texas, uh, but the places that got hit the worst, uh, Kerrville, Austin, in the lower risk of that. So we'll hope that uh, we can kind of repeat, uh, try to not repeat the same problems that we've run into, but definitely something we'll need to watch. All right, let's go ahead and take a look now at uh, some mesoscale models, and uh, then we'll start talking about that uh, other flooding concern by next week with the uh, potential tropical origins. Well, here's our latest model run, and uh, this is for 5 p.m. this evening, and you can see, yeah, more of the same. Those afternoon storms beginning to develop. Uh, now, higher in severe weather threat up here into the northeast. Again, we've got that upper-level piece of energy I showed you, helping to support those storms a little bit more from a severe weather side, but the flooding threat higher to the south, into the Carolinas and Virginia, uh, once again with uh, that general region. Now, as for the Midwest, we've got a boundary setting up. We've got a frontal system, a warm front kind of draped right into here. Uh, that's helping to create a little bit of extra spin, and with that, a higher tornado threat. You can see these storms developing from Nebraska, moving into Iowa. Uh, by the time we get into this evening, even storms up into Wisconsin and Illinois, we'll need to watch for tornado potential. As for the southeast, though, again, strong straight line winds, frequent lightning, and flooding will be the potential down there. So kind of uh, multiple threats depending on where you're watching. Now that's today. Overnight tonight, the pole storms in the east begin to die down a little bit. Still watching a mesoscale complex of storms into Iowa, southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois by the overnight hours of tonight. This is about 2 a.m. local time there. And uh, we'll keep on moving this. Now waking up for your Friday morning could have some storms left over from that moving into southern Michigan. 
uh, maybe northern Indiana, portions of, again, Wisconsin there through Chicago. And then by the afternoon, another round of storms develop. Again, all hazards possible severe weather-wise in the Midwest from uh, northern Missouri down into Kansas City, southern Iowa into northern Illinois could be a hot spot again tomorrow. And then down south, typical afternoon thunderstorm pop-ups. Luckily, by that point, a lot of our boundary now offshore, but still draping down across the Carolinas and the deep south. So once again, watching for, uh, you know, heightened storm development there. And then you almost get a bit of a squall line developing into the Midwest by tomorrow afternoon and evening with those storms and then typical more pop-up stuff down to the south. And you can see by the time we're waking up Saturday morning, this is why the flood threat again increasing down south into Kansas, Texas, and Oklahoma. Uh, another kind of piece of spin and energy creating some lift. With some Gulf moisture, you can see storms firing up there by Saturday morning. So that's what we're seeing in terms of radar. Let's zoom things back out now and look at the days ahead. And again, you'll see uh, kind of what I've been talking about uh, here over the past couple of minutes. All right, I know I keep teasing you, but before we talk about that uh, next storm that I've got my eyes on, I do want to show you the Supercell Composite Index just to, again, reinforce the idea. Uh, most of the significant severe weather, and again, that doesn't mean flooding. That means your hail, your wind, your tornadoes. Uh, things like that, really continuing to stay into the northern tier of the country. You can see over the next couple of days, flaring up there into the Midwest. Looks like another storm by this would be a Sunday into Monday of this coming week. But uh, all the ingredients staying up into the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, getting into Michigan, and at times uh, creeping its way into the Northeast. But overall speaking, um, you know, that's not untypical for this time of year. Although I will say it's maybe a little more active than previous summers have been. Uh, up that far north, but um, again, not atypical. All right, so this is what's next. This is our upper level energy map, and I think this is gonna paint the picture uh, pretty well of what could be some homegrown tropical-esque development, uh, and then that continuing active northern stream energy. So here we go by your Saturday, and uh, you can see there's that northern piece of energy. That's what's causing that severe weather up north into Minnesota, Wisconsin. Uh, and as that's happening, we've got our leftover boundary working offshore. So again, this is Friday. Uh, this is what's left of that boundary that's been causing all the rain in the east. We've got another boundary setting up over the Midwest. And then again, that storm system up to the north. So it's kind of layers. You can kind of see how they progress. They start strong into the north. They become a little bit more weaker and boundary-like in the Midwest and then really start to fizzle by the time they get to the east and the southeast. Um, but notice right here, we've got a little dip in our um, contour value here. That's an area of some lower pressure trying to develop here by you know Friday even and by this weekend. And should that hang around for a while, you'll notice on the GFS, we start to get some vorticity to spin up in that region off the Carolina coastline again, uh, but then kind of gets pulled back into the southeast. And this is by... Uh, about a week from now, a little less than that, we'll say five to seven days from now, uh, we've got an area of spin over the southeast. Now, uh, is this going to be a tropical storm or a hurricane? Probably not, honestly. But as we found out with Chantal, you did not need a uh, major storm to get big problems flooding-wise. And an area that's already been getting saturated recently by these afternoon storms uh, should we get a little piece of energy down here like that? It's something we'll need to watch. And I'll show you the European. This is the latest European run as well from this afternoon. One of the reasons I waited on recording this video uh, till a little bit later in the day today. Now, let's show you the same general idea. So there's Northern Stream Energy. Again, keeping the severe weather risk heightened up north. Uh, this is by early next week. Notice some vorticity trying to spin up here in the east. And the European, it's a little bit broader. It's a little bit further north. Uh, but same general idea, some sort of kind of annoying pesky little storm system tries to get going out there and uh, kind of hangs around for a little bit and that could absolutely increase flooding potential. Uh, by the time we get about a week from now, the European even gets a little piece of spin down into the Gulf. So we're going to watch that uh, we're going to keep an eye on it. I think that's the next potential storyline uh, outside of the continuing active uh, severe weather up north, but for uh, areas down south and you know the tropics-ish again, um, that's, that's something I'm definitely going to watch. All right, let's go take a look at a couple more maps uh, and then I'll let you go. Here's the latest run of the GFS American model. And we'll kind of, again, just go ahead and time it out for you. Uh, this is by this weekend. You can see still stormy up in the Midwest and into the Northern Plains, even the front range there of Colorado. It looks like getting some storm action uh, to develop. Now, we get a little bit of a break, I would say, uh, tomorrow, uh, Saturday and Sunday into the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic. Not completely dry, uh, but probably drier than yesterday and today was for many of us. Uh, then you can see by the time we get into early next week, uh, storminess beginning to rise again in the east and we get this area of disturbed weather to develop uh, into the southeast. By next Monday and Tuesday, you could see 
Uh, we've got that that we're watching and then a pretty feisty looking storm here again into the northern tier of the country. It looks like by next Monday or Tuesday here on the GFS. So uh, those are kind of the two big storylines. You can see it just stays active into the southeast with that piece of energy. And then these big storms out west turn into fronts and uh, slowly die out as they work east. And that seems to be the common theme that we're going to continue to track. Uh, the European model, I'll just briefly show it to you. Really the same thing, folks. You'll see. Uh, we'll pause it here by next Tuesday. We've got a southeastern piece of energy increasing rainfall, and we've got a northern plain storm system once again beginning to work back into the forecast. All right, rainfall-wise, what are the chances of rain? Is this just a fluke in the models, or do the ensembles agree? Well, this is the GFS ensembles uh, showing, again, uh, the potential for rain over a 24-hour time frame. So this would be rain from Saturday to Sunday. Again, looks kind of rainy out into Oklahoma, the Texas Panhandle, into southern Kansas, and even portions of the Ozarks while we're in a little bit of a drier trend, hopefully, to start the weekend into the southeast. Although, again, still afternoon storms possible, but less coverage than we have seen. Uh, keep it going ahead in time and notice, again, by Monday, Tuesday, rainfall chances increasing down into Florida, into the Carolinas, uh, seeing higher in rainfall potential. We've got higher in rain totals up into the Midwest with those storms that we were tracking. Uh, the Appalachian chain down south into North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia starting to see increased rainfall. And then you see how that slowly kind of begins to work up into the Gulf Coast region uh, by about seven to 10 days from now. So it looks unsettled there on the GFS ensembles. I'll even pull up the European ensembles because they just ran. Uh, we'll see what they look like. And uh, we'll look at this for the first time together. So let's see. Uh, all right, this is Monday, Tuesday. It uh, looks pretty rainy up in the Northeast on the European ensembles. Uh, and then uh, yeah, sure enough, the Southeast starts to increase some chances as well, although not as high as uh, the GFS. But they uh, do both agree that the Midwest uh, continues to stay pretty wet here. Uh, with this pattern. So uh, that's what we're looking at, folks. That's what I'm tracking. Again, potential tropical energy in the southeast, big storms up into uh, the Midwest and the Northern Plains. And uh, that's the story right now. Luckily, not seeing any huge hurricane potential or anything like that uh, within the next week or so. So we'll take that and uh, run with it. But uh, with that said, that's all I've got for you. All right, all have a great one. Stay safe and I'll see you all tomorrow.